Hey folks, in this video we're going to explore Share This, Key Considerations to Using Social Media. Uh, this two-part series is focused particularly on using social media in relation to developing and establishing a professional identity and thinking about how you use your professional digital identity online and what it means. This means we're not going to go into all of the different social media platforms that are out there. Uh, we're going to largely focus on ways to think about this in relation to how you can how you look and think about yourself as a professional and what that means for your different industries. And we'll spend some time discussing specifically LinkedIn and then mention or indicate you know some practices on others. So let's dive in. So the first thing we want to just kind of highlight here is there. Uh, since these are numbers from 2022 and the rise of mobile devices is 5.31 billion users worldwide. Uh, that is a, probably about three quarters of the human population. And what we see here are a series of usership across different social media platforms. And if you are in the United States in particular, LinkedIn, in, and we're talking professional uh, social media, LinkedIn is probably the one you're going to be using the most. But there's a lot of others out there, as you can see. In each one, I would say spend some time exploring and considering how you might use them or what advantage, advantages do, does each social media platform give you. Right now, again, I will stick with LinkedIn because it is front and center advertised and presented as a professional social media network, whereas the others certainly can have professional pockets, but by and large aren't necessarily considered places uh, where you would be presenting your pre professional self, but you might be presenting your personal self or your hobbies or the like. All right, so let's just get get into the basics. And for some folks, this is going to be pretty straightforward. For others, it may not be. For other folks, you may know about these things, but not considered about how we might use these. All right, so the hashtag. The hashtag is really popular across all of social media. Uh, it is the pound symbol that, or the number symbol for folks that are familiar. And it, what it really is, is it's an informal means of categorization. Uh, that is categorizing your posts or whoever is using the hashtag. And all that you're doing is adding that hashtag to the front of a word. Uh, so it might be a hashtag professional me. It might be hashtag share this. So long as share this is one word with no space between them. So what it does is it allows people to kind of frame what their post is about. And then because it, that hashtag has been used, it allows people to click on it and see other tag, other posts that have that tag. So it allows that term, it allows that term with the hashtag to be searchable. Uh, so professionally, this is really interesting because if your your industry has certain well known or established uh, terms, you can add a hashtag to it and then find out or have your your post associated with those other posts. Uh, and what I really like about this is that it allows individuals to interact with people they may not know. Uh, this is part of why I will use this on LinkedIn. I will use this on Twitter. It allows me to get into a conversation with other people that are using that hashtag, often which when we're talking in the professional context can be really useful. I can meet, I can network, I can find out other ideas about people that are talking about that particular hashtag or those set of hashtags. Uh, and pretty much most uh, most platforms at this point use them. Uh, it started on Twitter, but you can see it on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, all of them. And really, anyone can make up a hashtag. Nobody, there's no set rules that nobody has ownership as a of a hashtag. Anybody can use it. That's part of its benefit. That can be part of its its drawback because you might have different people using the same hashtags, but having very different conversations or uh, using it in different ways. So keep that in mind is that if you do try to use hashtags, try to make sure you're aware of the fact that there are specific ones that are well known within industry and yet other people still might be using them. And again, this is something that I see regularly is that people will gather around certain hashtags in my field, which is education and higher education. These are two hashtags that are pretty popular, hashtag higher ed and hashtag ed tech, which is short for educational technology. All right, so tagging. Uh, 
Tagging has that same word tag as hashtag, and so it indicates a way in which you are connecting things. Uh, so when somebody posts something or, and connects another user on that platform to that post. So maybe I am talking about a new article that a friend published and I'm, I'm posting a link to that article. I might tag the person that actually wrote it and said, hey, I can't believe you know this person wrote this great article. And we also are familiar with this when people do this within photos where they can tag somebody saying, oh, this image right there is this particular person. Um, typically, though, in posts, it's done by using the at symbol. So that's that, you know, the, the at symbol that we use as well as for like emails and the like. We use that. Um, some platforms will allow you to use the plus icon, but at is much more is much more universal. So you use the at symbol and then the person's name or username, depending on the platform. And so what that does is that creates a link from your post to that person's profile. And more likely than not, it lets that person know that some Somebody has tagged them. So this can be done to individuals, companies, even places. Uh, so if you were visiting somewhere or you had a really good experience with a company, you can write a post and tag those places. So why would we tag? What are some of the benefits of this in that professional context? Uh, the first is you might want to bring attention to the person or entity you are tagging. So you might tag them and highlight something you appreciate about them or something that they've done recently that you want other people to know about. You might also do this as a means of encouraging dialogue. And so sometimes if you're having a thought uh, within your industry and you want somebody's opinion, you might bring them into that conversation. Now, when you do this, you know, do this very carefully. You don't want to call in somebody into a conversation that is that puts them at the wrong end. People do this all the time. Uh, but this is one of the, this is one of those areas where think about how you do this thoughtfully if you're thinking of doing this in the professional context versus what we see in in general social media use where you might tag somebody as a means of complaining about them or uh, potentially even attacking them and that's not how you want to use this here. You might want to draw attention to somebody's posts. Um, so you might tag a local organization saying, oh my God, look at um, look at what they're doing and somehow also bring in some attention to what you're doing. And so this is sometimes you're trying to build upon what other people are talking about. And we'll talk about this in, a, in the, the second um, the second in the series, you got to be careful with this one that it's not too spammy. You want to make sure what you're doing is relevant and maybe it's your drawing inspiration that, you know, this local organization is doing this this thing and so I'm tagging them, acknowledging that's where I got my, ins my inspiration from. So you can think about this as trying to give credit to people publicly about how they are shaping what you're thinking, what you're doing. And then particularly whenever you're using tagging, I always recommend use it selectively, uh, particularly with friends and colleagues in your network. Try to make sure you understand what their comfort level is about how and who is tagging them and why. And respect privacy. Some people will not want to be tagged. Always try to check if those, you know, if that is the case. Uh, whenever you can make sure to protect people's privacy or respect their wishes of how they conduct themselves on social media, uh, you're being the, you're being a good professional. You're being respectful. Um, you're you're do you're not trying to push people into doing things or engaging in ways that they that they may not be using social media for. All right, so those are just kind of some of the broad concepts. What we want to move into now is some of the questions and considerations you should be thinking about as you are starting to use social media or even before and really asking yourself some questions about how you want to be in the space. How do you want to show up? How, are, how and what are the decisions driving you to use this as a professional? So this is what I like to call sticky considerations. Uh, the first is the public and private divide. And this is how public and how private do you want to be? How public and private can you afford to be? For some people, it's very easy for them to be very public about everything they're doing professionally. And for others, it's not. And so thinking on your own practice, what are the benefits and the drawbacks? What are the things that you have to consider not just your privacy, but potentially who you work with's privacy or 
uh, even people that you are connected, you know, friends and colleagues. So be thinking about what does it mean to be public in these spaces that while yes, you potentially can delete content, there's also a way in which there's no, no perfect way to perfectly delete all content that you put out there. Ask yourself who do you and don't you connect with? Uh, people have lots of different thoughts on how they connect and who they connect with on social media and what it means. This is doubly so for our professional networks. One of the biggest questions that people put out there is, do you or do you not connect with your supervisor? Now, my general point of view, this is me personally point of view is, I never try to connect on social media with a person that I work under or that works uh, works under me in you know hierarchy at, a, at an organization. That for some people is what they're comfortable with or, or for me I like to keep those things distant because I think that that makes certain that just makes this less murkier or kind of blending of personal and pri personal and public space. For others they may feel differently but it's something for you to consider something for you to think about who you will and won't connect with and that includes do you want to connect with family members on professional networks especially if for some reason you have any concern about who they are as professionals that that does that, you know that is a that is a sticky consideration um, and there's not any good clear answer besides thinking about what it, what you feel comfortable with what you do and don't discuss uh, you will hear some people say that on a place like LinkedIn you should never discuss politics that of course is a very political thing uh, to do right that is to be able to be in a place where your work doesn't feel like it has any political grounding or political stake in things uh, but many people work at nonprofits many people work at an, an education many people work in government and these are all places where politics of different sorts really do impact uh, our day-to-day -day lives even in business pol politics has that role so politics as an example here is you may want to think about are there are you open to discussing all politics? Are there certain pockets of politics that would be important for you as a professional to discuss, to demonstrate your understanding or to show your own ways of, of navigating that? So as a whole, it's something to think about. What do and don't you discuss on these platforms? Do you discuss personal life? Do you not discuss personal life? Um, again, no right or wrong answers, but it's more how do you arrive at what you think your personal approach to this should be? Uh, how do you, how do or don't you present and engage, right? So now that you are on these platforms, what does it mean to comment on other people's posts or like or share or whatnot? What is, what is driving you? Uh, what do you think is important? What do you think is comfortable or responsible for who you are and where you are in your career? And then how do you navigate people, uh, how do you navigate how people see uh, at a frozen moment in time? So no matter what, you're going to post things and years are going to go by. I mean, I'm a good, I'm a good example. I've been on LinkedIn since, you know, probably 2008, 2009. Um, I do have to think about, you know, past things that I've posted. How do I think about, you know, those are frozen moments at time. Who I was five years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago. If I'm a human being who grows and learns, that is a different me. Uh, then than I am now. And so as you start to post, as you start to share things, also remember that, you know, this is, this is likely accessible by people in your network for years to come. Now that's not a don't ever post anything ever like that. That's not a scare tactic. Uh, we do see the ways in which people can be attacked um, for things that have been posted before and at the same time there's lots of people who post lots of things in which there no, no uh, nothing ever happens and so I would just say here to be be mindful of it and at the same time don't let it dominate your thinking if you are trying to develop this professional identity and, and if you can come to a sense of why and how and what you're doing on these platforms I think it a lot it creates its own a, it creates your own internal uh, means of navigating tricky questions like this. At the end, there's no perfect consensus. Uh, the personal decisions that are going to be grounded in your context, and I think that's always important to remember within all of this.
All right, so let's talk about some usage considerations. Uh, this is a, a bit of an extension of the, the last slide, but goes into a little bit more detail. So the first is uh, identity considerations. How public do you want to be? How public can you be? For some folks, there's no question at all. For others, like there's navigating your privacy in ways that some people won't understand. There's people who have had uh, stalkers. There's people who have had uh, who have been exposed or, or subjected to domestic violence. And so there raises questions about how public do you want to be? What name or what images do you use to present yourself? So um, you want to think for yourself, where are the advantages and disadvantages in being uh, the degree to the degree of public that you are? And again, outside of that, outside of that space of, you know, potential, threats because of where you sit within uh, within your particular context, you also want to think about, well, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being public in this professional context? And so disadvantages can be, especially if you have a common name, when somebody goes to do a Google search for you, you put in a job application and between the job application and the interview is the Google search and you don't actually show up in that, but other people do, and they can be other people that have nothing to do with the industry. They could be people that have uh, potentially negative connotations around their background. And so thinking about what does it mean for you to try to elevate your publicness by being more active and more present digitally. Um, how might that make create certain advantage for you during that Google search? How might that create certain advantages for how they come to see you before they ever get to actually meet you in the interview? And then how do you want to make sure your digital self aligns with your physical self? Now we've been talking about this idea of digital self and kind of thinking about this idea that we are a profile in this digital space. We are that, you know, that, pro that, that LinkedIn profile, that Facebook profile. It's not really us, but people assume this, that, that digital profile is you. And so what does that mean? Or how do you decide to make sure it aligns with your physical self? And I don't necessarily mean this in physical appearance, but more in does the does the persona or the pr person you present in these social media spaces align with who you anticipate being in these professional contexts? Now the answer may be yes, but you want to make sure that there, you can see the through line and you can communicate that through line between that digital person and yourself. So what else do we got here? This is one of the questions that comes up often, and that is security settings. So as you're thinking about how to do all of this, you're also wondering about, well, how do I make sure that I, I am comfortable with who can see what among me? And I will say this, each platform has its own security settings. And that means you do have to slowly familiarize yourself with them, go in and play around. The resource that I have at the rent, at the end of this does include a link. Uh, at the end of this, I have a link to resources and that includes several different uh, items that will show you how to adjust and where to find these security settings on most social media networks. Security is also not static. And what I mean by that is as these systems, as these services add more elements to them, that means there's going to be new security questions to arise, right? So when LinkedIn first came out, I can't exactly recall, but my guess is it didn't have uh, features like posting uh, to the wall or it didn't have features like your image and so that would raise the question of once those those things became available, new security questions arose. Like, do you want everybody to see your posts or do you just want people in your network to see your posts? So just keep that in mind is that as features change, so is the security of the platform going to change. And so I would recommend really seeking out articles uh, for a given platform to better understand, to better look at, to better analyze the uh, the settings and where your comfort level is with them. The other thing I also encourage is to regularly audit your social media security if you're if you're concerned about this. And one easy way to do this is, you know, have a friend um, 
have a friend do you know to do a Google search of you or do a search of you on certain social media platforms to get a sense uh, you can also do this by opening up a private browser tab and going and doing a search of yourself and trying to see what you can see of of yourself on different platforms uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that these secure the security systems change regularly uh, Facebook was notorious for changing these throughout the the 2000s and early 2010s and so you won't, this is why you also want to make sure you regularly go back and check those settings see what new things have been added see if anything has changed all right so other things to think about um, choosing who to friend follow link whatever the lingo is for the particular platform uh, we know friends on Facebook are not friends and that's okay so you want to be thinking about what does it mean to connect with other people what are you comfortable with um, and again in your head have that conversation have that sense of what does it mean that I am going to be connected with this person. There's lots of great reasons to connect with people. There's also lots of great reasons not to connect with people. And so thinking about what that means. For some, it'll mean I will never connect with anybody that I have not met face to face. Uh, for others, it will mean I will connect with everybody in my industry because that could be useful. Uh, there's a happy middle in there somewhere for, for all of us. Um, so again, consider who you want to be connected with and when. Um, this is always, you know, as I said before, you know, if I am a supervisor or I am being supervised, those people I usually wait till I've left that position to connect with. Um, but there's others you may or may not want to be connected to. So keeping in mind where, where are the outlier, or where is the uh, the range for you? Also consider what terms you would terminate uh, a connection and people don't always give this good consideration but it is worth thinking about when are you connected with somebody and that it's no longer useful, relevant or valuable. Um, now sometimes that can be because they've done something extremely you know uh, horrible mean etc to you directly to somebody you know um, it may be you're no longer in that industry and you were never really that connected with that person so you feel you're okay to terminate that connection whatever it is just make sure again you have a, a sense of why you're doing it and you have that guide you throughout all of this uh, also, be transparent about why you won't connect or have terminated a connection if, if asked. Uh, in my case, I often explain to students that while I am teaching a course, I wouldn't connect with them on social media after the course. Uh, I am open to it, uh, particularly on a place like LinkedIn, where it makes a lot of sense to, to grow connections, particularly around men, uh, teaching and mentoring relationships. What else do we got? Choosing to share, really thinking about what it is that you're going to put out there. Uh, remembering that, as, as mentioned before, getting what you shared to go away can be difficult. So kind of keeping that in mind as you decide what you're going to put out there. Uh, know your sharing comfort in those you're networked with, networked with. So again, being mindful of if I'm going to share something and, and tag somebody, do I know that they are comfortable with this? And since you are your profile, just be careful with what you share. Uh, this is particularly, you know, we've seen this in the last decade of it's very, very easy to share misinformation. It's very, very hard to uh, delete or remove or to undo that. So there's no, you know, keep, it's very easy to quickly share something that grabs your attention, but it's more important for you to curate uh things that are valuable and important for your network and to not become somebody that others see or think about as providing unreliable information. And we get choosing to participate. You know, social media is a dialogue and this is something we don't all do really well. We're all great, <laughs> apparently on social media, we're all great at talking or yelling, but we're really not good at listening. And so the big question to think about is, can you listen and talk? Can you carry on conversations? And even if you choose to get into debates, can you do so in a way that is respectful? Because again, it's not just your eyes, it's just it's not the eyes of the person that you're in dialogue with, but it's really anybody that you or that person is connected to. And so how do you want to present yourself there? Uh, what topics or areas do you want to avoid? Again, what is things that you are comfortable talking about or that you feel would be important for you to talk about? 
And then there's also choosing uh, choosing to opt out personally. So maybe you do will or will have that professional uh, profile, but you'll try to make sure um, what you do personally is not necessarily, or maybe you choose not to use social media for personal uses. Uh, but there's different ways to think about this. Is this a short term or is this a long term? Um, you may have good reasons for, for either answer. You may take a little sabbatical from uh, social media altogether. You may take a sabbatical from social media for personal use. Um, whatever it is, again, thinking about what that means for your practice, what that means for developing that digital identity. If you're not using social media, are there other ways people can find out about you and your work as a professional? So maybe that's a blog. Maybe that's... Uh, I, I, consider, I don't consider blogging a... Uh, I don't consider blogging social media. I think it's it's a little predates social media. Uh, still an important tool. So is it a blog? Is it a website? Or are there other ways people can find out about you as that profession? All right, that's the first video. Those are those are things to be thinking about, things to consider on how you're going to construct and maintain your digital identity. In the next one, we're going to talk about the engaged professional and what that means and what that looks like and, and what you'll want to think about. So thank you for watching and I look forward to hearing your questions or seeing you in the next video.